A multi-state crime spree ends here in Scott County. Coming up, we'll have the details. A Caribbean island is calling on Kentucky for help. So we want to help uh, people on the island. How officials in St. Lucia hope the Kentucky Reptile Zoo can help their snake problem. They're holding their key to lock their car, and they just copy the code. How a device is helping thieves break into cars and homes without breaking a window. This is WQIT News at 5.30. Good evening. Three Michigan men are in a central Kentucky jail tonight, accused of trying to buy gift cards with stolen credit cards. Stephen Harris, Delano Montgomery, and Demarcus Taylor were all arrested yesterday at a Kmart in Scott County. Georgetown police believe the three men have been traveling down Interstate 75 and stopping at many stores. Monique Blair is tracking the investigation in our top story at 5.30. Two 18-year-olds and a 22-year-old are behind bars here at the Scott County Detention Center after a Georgetown store clerk noticed something didn't seem quite right about a credit card the men were trying to use. Some of the clerks had noticed that one of the credit cards that had been presented felt and appeared uh, to have flaws in its, for, in its surface. They realized that it didn't look and feel like a normal credit card. Georgetown Police Detective Lieutenant Don Mather says several stores in Kentucky were on alert after being tipped off that there were men in the area using stolen credit cards to buy gift cards. Police say 18 year old Demarcus Taylor, 18 year old Stephen Harris, and 22 year old Delano Montgomery are all from Detroit and had already hit stores in Versailles and Frankfurt before coming to Georgetown. That this is very typical of things that we've seen in the past where individuals typically young in the 18 to 20 year old range come from other states and they travel down I-75. As they travel down 75, they commit various crimes in multiple states and they're never in one place for very long. The three suspects are each charged with multiple class D felonies. Now, Georgetown police are asking for your help. If you recognize the three suspects we just showed you in this story and you believe they may have committed a crime near you, police are asking that you call them. In Scott County, Monique Blair, WKYT. As uh, police say, although this type of crime is fairly common, the fact that they were able to catch them while they were still in the area is not. Deputies in Madison County trying to track down a stolen ATV. Deputies say a 2008 Polaris Razor was stolen from a home on Treeline Drive in Berea. This is a picture of the stolen ATV. The ATV was heard driving south on South Dogwood Drive towards Flat Gap about 3 this morning. Deputies tell us the owner of the ATV is offering a reward. State police have identified two people killed in a house fire earlier this week. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Morgan County. The fire started Tuesday morning at a home on Rock House Branch Road. State police say 71-year-old Bertha Knox and 24-year-old Alicia Cantrell died after the house they were in caught on fire. Firefighters have not released an official cause yet, but they believe a wood-burning stove was to blame. In Shelby County, a police officer accused of stealing evidence will be in court next week. Simpsonville officer Terry Putnam will be arraigned Tuesday afternoon. State police believe officer Putnam broke into the police department and took drugs, guns, and $30,000 in cash from evidence lockers. State police say Putnam has been with Simpsonville for two and a half years, but has been in law enforcement for 23 years. In Montgomery County, a busy road is back open tonight after a serious crash. It happened on U.S. 460 about 7 this morning in Mount Sterling. Deputies say the driver of a car lost control, crossed the center line, and hit a semi head-on. The driver of the car was taken to U.K. hospital. The semi driver wasn't injured. A man who lives near the crash site says his niece helped the injured man until crews got to the scene. When she heard it, she ran down there, you know, just see what she could do, you know, to the paramedics got down there. So, you know, I think she just, you know, kind of checked them out and, you know, see what was going on. And they told her, you know, just do what she could do, you know, to the rest of them got there. Investigators don't know yet what caused the driver of the car to lose control, but they say wet roads might have been a factor. And speaking of wet, a soggy end of the work week, but we are tracking some big changes as we head through the weekend. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at that weekend forecast. Chris? Yeah, we're starting things out, Sam, on a very mild note across central and eastern Kentucky. The rains from earlier now beginning to scoot on out of town. Temperatures right now 
Not too far away from what we were talking about 24 hours ago. We're three degrees warmer in Lexington, but we are a little cooler across southern Kentucky, so you throw it all into the mix. Basically, it's very similar to the same point yesterday. 52 degrees Lexington, 49 cool spot northeastern Kentucky. Most areas, though, 50 to 55. A much better looking Defender radar network. A little bit of light rain showing up across northeastern Kentucky. Let's hit the fast forward button. Model is actually trying to clean the clouds up just a little bit. Still fair game for a sprinkle or two on the car windshield. But overall, clouds will begin to thicken back up as we go into the day tomorrow as we watch this storm that is now barreling its way across the Lone Star state of Texas. Mild air out ahead of that. Cold air coming in behind it. That's how you get a nice little storm system to crank. That will be right on top of Kentucky as we go into later tomorrow. And from there, it is all about the snow chances and the Arctic cold blasts that take up residence in our seven day forecast. A complete breakdown, guys, coming up here in less than 10 minutes. Thank you, Chris. A Western Kentucky bridge closed because of flooding last month has finally reopened. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet says the water has dropped enough for traffic to cross the U.S. 51 Ohio River Cairo Bridge again. But drivers are asked to use caution because uh, floodwaters are still near the edge of the road. And with that bridge closed, drivers had to take an 80 mile detour using Interstate 24 through southern Illinois. U.S. 51 near the Ballard Carlisle County line is still closed. Crews say it may be a few days before that road can reopen. A Caribbean island is calling on Kentucky for help. St. Lucia has an endangered snake getting closer to where people live, and they've asked officials from the Kentucky Reptile Zoo to help them keep people safe. New at 5:30, Mike Linden tells us how zoo officials plan to help the island with their St. Lucian lancehead viper. From Kentucky to St. Lucia, a place a lot of us would like to be this time of year. But not all is perfect on this island. The St. Lucian lancehead viper's habitat is shrinking, and the snake is living closer than ever to humans. Now the island country is calling on Kentucky for help. So we want to help uh, people on the island understand the nature of the snake and also understand how to stay safe around it. Got a snake problem? Call in Jim Harrison and Kristen Wiley. The couple oversee one of the largest collections of venomous snakes in the world. Home base is the Kentucky Reptile Zoo, where milking a snake's venom can be used for research. Now their mission is to go to St. Lucia for education and conservation of this endangered species. We also um, want to equip them so that, uh, with training and with the actual equipment, so that if the snakes are in a place where they shouldn't be, the people can stay safe while moving them. The couple is asking for help. They have started a GoFundMe page to help ship equipment down to the island. Increased land development in the country has moved man and snake closer. Useful tools like this grab stick can help remove the snake from someone's yard or tree. If you need to, you can uh, gently grasp the snake in order to pick it up. Snake hooks and buckets with tight lids are additional items needed to wrangle in these potential dangerous reptiles. Wiley says even though the island may be thousands of miles away, she can still feel the impact of her work here in Kentucky. You know, we're all humans, and uh, it's upon us to help each other when we can. In Powell County, Mike Linden, WKYT. The Powell County couple raised $1,000 within 10 days. At this point, they're halfway to their goal. If you want to donate, just click on this story on WKYT.com. There's an alarming new weapon thieves can use to get into your car or home. A news television storm tracker had tens of thousands of dollars of TV equipment stolen right out of his truck. Detectives say the hacking advice could have been used in that burglary. Safe to say that at any given shopping center, the majority of cars are locked with a remote key. But don't walk away from your car so soon. Roll Jam can bypass rolling codes. The codes exchange between a car and remote key every time you lock and unlock. So all they had to do is walk up to your car, push the button, and it copies the code, open, unlocks your car, and uh, uh, you know whatever is in there is theirs. News storm tracker Von Castor knows because police believe it happened to him. Detectives investigating the theft of tens of thousands of dollars of TV equipment from his truck think the thieves or thief used the device for quick, easy access. They're holding their key to lock their car, and they just copy the code. The device doesn't work only with cars, but also garage doors, possibly allowing a thief into your home. 
Amazing and infuriating, says Vaughn. The good news is there's an easy fix for your car. Simply lock your car using the locks inside the vehicle, which do not send the same code as a remote key, or use an actual key to lock your doors old-fashioned from the outside. Still ahead on WKYT News at 5.30, a record-setting December for Kentucky taxpayers. How much the state collected? I'm Bill Bryant. Kentucky's colleges and universities are hoping to make a deal with Frankfurt. Republicans hint at a possible historic day ahead. And Lexington Mayor Jim Gray acknowledges now that he is exploring a U.S. Senate race. The bottom line is ahead. For all your hearth and grill needs, shop BarnhillChimney.com. Get ready to save some money. It's the New Year's sale at Burke Furniture, where you get free financing for 12 months, plus incredible savings on quality furniture like Broyhill and Bernhardt, up to 70% off the New Year's sale at Burke's. Don't miss it. More. 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 We have more flights to more of the places you want to go every single day. See for yourself. Visit us today. The candidate from Cartown Kia can give people $8,000 off new Kia Optimus. What can you offer? Well, we have yesterday's coffee. Oh. <laughs> There's no debate. Get $8,000 off MSRP on all select new 2015 Kia Optimus in stock at Cartown Kia. Take home a new 2016 Kia Sorento SUV for only $189 per month. And if you have a job bringing home $350 per week, we want to approve your credit. We can do credit. We don't do credit. Don't debate it. Get to Cartown Kia. Are you happy with your bathroom? I wasn't. I thought I didn't have the money until I learned about Bathfitter. Bathfitter puts a new bathtub right over your old one. Isn't that amazing? Bathfitter will measure and install right over your existing tub. And only Bathfitter has seamless walls, which guarantees a watertight fit. Plus, they do it all in just one day. That's my favorite part. Book a free consultation and find out for yourself. Call today or learn more at bathfitternow.com. CBS Tonight, undercover boss flexes its muscles on a new night. Two bosses. Let's do this. Sharing one company. He is off the road, man. Don't see <laughs> eye to eye. She needs to be a little bit more professional. She really makes the costumes feel good. New undercover boss, CBS Tonight, or stream it live or on demand. It ain't easy being a genius. We do not do dangerous. We do calculations. Welcome to Scorpion, everyone. Scorpion, CBS This Monday. I chose you eight to travel throughout time because the future of the world is in peril. I say we kick some ass. DC's Legends of Tomorrow series premiere Thursday, January 21st on The CW. Get ready to save some money. It's the New Year's sale at Burke Furniture, where you get free financing for 12 months, plus incredible savings on quality furniture like Broyhill and Bernhardt, up to 70% off the New Year's sale at Burke's. Don't miss it. Kentucky's public universities and colleges are offering a deal to state lawmakers. And Lexington Mayor Jim Gray addressing his future, Bill Bryant explains, in the bottom line. Good evening. Some intrigue in Frankfurt heading into the weekend as House Republican leader Jeff Hoover has hinted at an historic day coming on Monday. Hoover made his remarks at the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce dinner in Lexington. Republicans have been working to take control of the chamber from Democrats for the first time in 95 years. But Hoover would say nothing else about his hint. Meanwhile, Governor Matt Bevin indicated that lean times are ahead for the state budget. The governor says he's gotten requests for more than $2 billion in new spending, but Bevan says he will be pruning things and prioritizing pension funds in his budget proposal so that Kentucky can get its finances in order. Kentucky's public universities and colleges are offering up a deal to the governor and lawmakers. They say if Frankfurt will restore half of the more than $170 million in cuts made to higher ed over the last several years, they will meet or exceed performance goals. Robert King, who heads up the Council on Post-Secondary Education, says with the money restored, the schools could provide a better workforce and boost the economy. I understand, and we all understand, that at the end of the day, uh, they have some very tough choices to make. But we believe deeply that the priorities that eventually the budget reflects uh, has to include understanding the importance of creating the best educated, best trained workforce that we can. 
King's comments come from Kentucky newsmakers. You can hear from him and also meet Kentucky's new state treasurer, Allison Ball, on the program this weekend. It runs Sunday morning at 6 on WKYT. It repeats Sunday at 10 a.m. on the CW Lexington. Set your DVR or catch it then. We've been reporting the rumblings over the last month or so that Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is looking at running for the Democratic nomination for the U.S. Senate. And now Gray is publicly acknowledging that he is considering challenging Republican Senator Rand Paul, who is seeking a second term in the Senate while also running for president. The deadline to file is January 26th. And 11 presidential candidates met yesterday's deadline to be in Kentucky's Republican caucus on March 5th. Some may campaign in the state before the caucus on that Saturday, right after Super Tuesday. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Kentucky taxpayers paying nearly a billion dollars in taxes last month, making it the third largest tax collection ever for the state. Taxpayers paid a total of $996.8 million in taxes in December. That's an 8.6% increase from December 2014. The state budget director says Kentucky has only passed a billion dollars in collections twice, and both happened last year. State economists predicted Kentucky's tax collections would grow by 3.2 percent for the budget year that ends June 30th. So far, revenues have grown 4 percent. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. A lot of clouds out there today. Started out the day on a very wet note. It's still mild, though, this afternoon. Heading out and about this evening, those temperatures really not going to drop very much at all because of all the cloud cover. Then the weekend rolls around and a lot of big changes are blowing in here. Look outside, a dreary Hamburg Pavilion in the distance. That's dreary, at least with the sky conditions. Get out there, live it up a little bit on a Friday evening. Weather-wise, everybody dealing with the clouds. Here's the Mountain Parkway corridor. Roads that were wet earlier are beginning to dry up a little bit. Heading into the day tomorrow, mid and upper 40s to begin the day, so not a big drop tonight. Now, southern showers will develop first, so from south to north as the afternoon wears on, we'll see some rain coming into town. Winds will gust up as well. I suspect we get into tomorrow evening, and then that's when the steadiest rains will begin to fall. So you may get a lot of dry times tomorrow. Current temperatures low 50s into most of central and eastern Kentucky. Your Defender Radar Network has been picking up on a couple of raindrops here into parts of north central Kentucky. That stuff continues to scoot on away from us. We look back to the west. Area of low pressure into Texas has milder air ahead of it. Cold air coming in behind it. That by tomorrow evening at this time we will be working across the bluegrass state. So it's going to make a beeline toward Kentucky with mild Mild temperatures tomorrow, gusty winds, rain arriving as we go into the late afternoon and evening hours. Then look at Sunday. Temperatures take a big dive with some snow showers around. Rainfall totals through tomorrow night, generally a half to maybe three quarters of an inch into parts of central and eastern Kentucky. Some heftier totals showing up to our west. How about the transition to some snow? Let's break it down now. Hour by hour forecast. Through most of tomorrow, we are dry until late in the afternoon. Through the evening. Now we go into Sunday. Watch the colors make the transition from green to some pink to some white as the numbers continue to drop through the afternoon. So, a day that for some of us, when we wake up Sunday morning, we still may be at 40 degrees or a little better. And then by the afternoon, we're dropping it into the mid 20s. Some teens show up into the evening with some flurries continuing. And by the time you roll into Monday morning, those readings are down into the low and mid teens with a wind chill. Colder than that. Snow showers around on Sunday could put down some light accumulations. Cause for concern on Sunday with wet roads to start the day, then temperatures going below freezing. May see some icing conditions trying to pop at some point on Sunday with some of those light accumulating snow showers. Arctic front. Slams in here on Tuesday. That is likely to put down some accumulations as temperatures drop. We may see single digit lows by Wednesday morning. Woo, 55 tomorrow, <laughs> then 8 degrees by Wednesday morning. <laughs> All right, enjoy it. Yep. We should have been warned. Yes, you have. <laughs> well, the Looks like an uh, overall look at the election rush hour traffic right now. We're seeing some slowdowns in some places. A lot of that has to do with collisions. We're working four right now. One is in Jessamine County. It's at Keenan Paddock. Now, that is an injury collision and getting word that's backing up traffic on 169 as well. Quite a mess there, uh, 169 and 27 in that area. There's also a collision at uh, Manowar and Versailles Road. Manowar and Old Higby Mill Road, they're working a crash. Uh, and they're still cleaning the road up downtown. That one's at Newtown in Maine. Injury crash there has part of that intersection blocked. Now back to the studio.
Thank you, Officer Don. The Cats go into Alabama looking for their first road win in the SEC, Rob. Well, a game they really need. What kind of a feeling does John Calipari have about it? And a Wildcat who was able to get his chance against LSU and made the most of it Tuesday night, Michael Mulder. He's had to be patient. That's next on WKYT. It's the first new Hawaii 5 of 2016. You sang us up for couples therapy. Yeah. As long as we're together. Hey, you. New Hawaii 5 -0. Then don't miss the first new Blue Bloods of the year. That's an order. Yes, sir. And the tell-all book. About us. All the true stories. But you two aren't reading it that bad. Then has Scandal. That book gets published over my dead body. Written all over it. He's my friend. He was my partner. I don't need your permission. My lawyers say different. New Blue Bloods. After Hawaii 5 -0, CBS Tonight. At Bryant Heating and Cooling, your home comfort is our only mission. That's why maintenance matters. And with winter right around the corner, now's the perfect time. Call now for preventive maintenance, just $64.95. It's a small price to pay for peace of mind. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield wants to know, what's your health insurance IQ? True or false, a lot of people qualify for financial help to lower the cost of their health insurance. False? Actually, millions of people have qualified for financial help on their health insurance through the Affordable Care Act. A family of four making about $95,000 a year or less may qualify. You are required by law to have health coverage. True. Yep. Most people were required to have health coverage starting in 2014. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield can help protect your family's health with one easy call. Did you know all their plans cover doctor visits, prescription drugs, hospital stays, and more? Yes, with $0 preventive care. The deadline to enroll is earlier this year, so don't wait. Call now for free expert guidance and a free quote. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Call us at 1-800-769-7581 for a free quote. That's 1-800-769-7581. That's the sound of Sirius XM, controlled by the largest touchscreen in its class. This is the sound of someone blowing past the last gas station for over 500 miles. That's the sound of four usually rowdy kids enjoying their favorite movie. And together, these are the sounds of a well-executed automotive symphony. Right now, returning FCA lessees get 5,500 total cash allowance on the purchase of 2016 Chrysler Town & Country vehicles. When an auto accident happens, it's sometimes more complicated than just which driver is at fault. Many times it involves a tire that blew out, a car that rolled over, a defect on that car. It's so important to make sure that the car and the tires are not destroyed or repaired. Our crash team and products liability lawyers need to be investigating these cases day one. All car crashes are not the same. Time is of the essence. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. We could all use a little pick-me-up in the mornings, even on the weekend. Michelle Chamberlain and Sean Moody get you ready for whatever your weekend has in store on WKYT This Morning. At Bryant Heating and Cooling, your home comfort is our only mission. That's why maintenance matters. And with winter right around the corner, now's the perfect time. Call now for preventive maintenance, just $64.95. It's a small price to pay for peace of mind. Get WKYT news and weather updates on Wild 103.9. The Wildcats will certainly hope to fare better tomorrow night on the road as they go into Alabama. Kentucky is coming off Tuesday's rough loss down at LSU. Earlier, we heard John Calipari say he put his team through a rough practice yesterday. Cal said Alabama will play hard. He was optimistic today, but cautious. I expect that uh, we'll play better, but, you know, you don't know if you're going to win or lose until you win or lose. And we're going to get them ready and see what happens. One of the bright spots Tuesday was the play of Michael Mulder. He hasn't had a lot of playing time, but he came off the bench, nailed this three-pointer, also pulled down eight rebounds. You know, I was just, um, I've been waiting for an opportunity to, to show that I can be trusted on the basketball floor and, you know, um, just went in and worked hard, and I felt like that's what I should bring every game. Um, I bring that to practice, and, you know, I just hope that carries over. I thought he had great energy, he rebounded the ball, mixed it up. Did good stuff. Did good stuff. I play with a lot of great players, and uh, the, the guys that are in front of me are, are amazing players. So um, it's just more just waiting for my opportunity to come, and when it does, grab it with two hands. 
So it's into Tuscaloosa tomorrow night. The Tide now coached by Avery Johnson. Six o'clock tip off on the SEC Network. The UK women took care of business last night with a win over Alabama and quickly ended their one game losing streak. Matthew Mitchell and his Wildcats back on the road now, heading to Georgia this weekend. The coach said today that after surveying the SEC landscape, it could be a big year for upsets and opportunities for some of the SEC teams. This is one thing I know about the conference. There's nobody um, sitting in their facility today uh, even thinking about losing. Everybody wants to win this conference. This is the uh, most excellent athletic conference in the world, and um, it is very, very competitive and tough. And running back D'Angelo Williams is out of Saturday's wild card playoff game in Cincinnati. Williams injured his right foot on this play against the Browns. Fitzgerald Toussaint and Jordan Todman will fill in. Andy Dalton will also not play Saturday. Dalton, as you know, broke his thumb against Pittsburgh on December 13th. You can see the AFC wild card game right here on WKYT. Steelers, Bengals tomorrow. Coverage begins at 8 o'clock. The Wildcats are getting a transfer quarterback. We'll talk about that in the next half hour. Stay with us. We're back after the break.